Okay, so I'm going to talk about joint work with Raquel Coyer Simores about a combinatorial way to describe string algebras and representation theory for them. And we've seen like related objects in the last talk, so, that talk, so that's quite fortunate. Let me briefly recall what a string or gentle algebra is. So I'm going to do that in, in one line or one definition. I start with a quiver Q and an algebraically closed field K. And I take KQ mod I, um, so some relations. That is a string algebra. So that's everything in blue. If at every vertex, we have at most two arrows which start and end there. And for every arrow, there is at most one arrow which composes with it such that it's not gonna be zero in the algebra. So that's before or after. And if we assume in addition the green part that we also have at most one arrow which composes in to a relation in both directions, then that's called gentle algebra. And the last part is about the relations. So the ideal should be generated by path at least of length two for string algebras and more restrictive. If we look at gentle algebras, we want them to be of length two. So just locally, what this means in your quiver, any vertex will have at most four vertices or four arrows going in and out. In the gentle case, you would have, if it's a four valent vertex, you have two relations. And in the string case, you might have more relations. So I'll try to indicate the string or general situation by red relations. And then, well, if, if, that's, <laughs> if that's the objection to being gentle, there are other objections. So examples for this are these three. Maybe start with C, that's the easiest one. It's just no oriented cycles at all and no relations. That's the string and the gentle algebra. Example B is not a gentle algebra because the relations that you get are not generated in length two. So here we have a three cycle and we need three arrows to make a relation. And the first one, if we forget the red relation, this is a gentle example, but with the red relation, this is a string algebra. Okay. Um, now, there is a lot known for sorry, string algebras or gentle algebras. So representation theory is known classically. Gelfand, Ponomarev and Wald, Wattbüsch have described in the composable modules. So we have string modules and band modules. And the string modules um, arise from words in the arrows. So let me just briefly write that we have a walk in the quiver where each element or letter is an arrow or it's inverse. So all the WIs are arrows or they're formal inverses and they should compose. So that's this condition. And then band modules would be strings. I should say something. So we never want a, A inverse or A inverse A in such a walk. And then we call it a string. The band modules are cyclic strings. So also at the end, you can compose with the start, but in a way that any power of it is still a string, but it's not a proper power of a string itself. So that's sort of the shortest possible way to go around the cyclic string. Examples for this in, in our running to two or three algebras, I was trying to indicate one walk here with the light blue. So we would have a string following C, D, E inverse, or oh, there's a typo, um, because that was forbidden, C, D, E inverse B. And in the other example, I have a band, which is AB inverse. 
you see its second power is still a string, but it's not a band anymore. String, no band. And so that's a band and a string. And in the first algebra, there are no bands. Okay, so these are examples to illustrate. Um, surface combinatorics have been used a lot in representation theory in the last 10, 15 years already. For example, you can describe, and then this list is not going to be exhaustive, but just a few topics. Extensions between indecomposable objects can be described via crossings. So in cluster categories, this has been studied a lot, for example, by Bruce Lejeune, also in module category, or in joint work with Marsh on tubes, where we describe extensions for the modules and for the cluster categories or the work of um, Kanaki and Froll and also with Coxtello. Then you can use surface combinatorics in tilting theory, tau tilting theory, and representation theory of gentle algebras has been described in joint work with Coelho Sumores and also Oppermann Plamonos Roll, where you go to the derived category. Locally gentle algebras, for example, by Palu, Pilo, and Plamonon. This is going to be used later in the talk. Okay, let me get to the string algebras now. So what we characterize is string algebras as a tiling algebra associated to a surface. And I'm going to explain more in a bit. So the important points here are we take a liable tiling algebra and because we're not looking at gentle but at string algebras and what do the letters mean? So S would be a surface, possibly with empty boundary and with punctures and marked points. So M are the marked points can be in the interior. Punctures are okay. Um, P is a dissection. And in the last talk, we saw a triangulation. So we take arcs, which are pairwise non-crossing um, and which dissect the whole surface into nice little regions or tiles and L are a set of labels. And the labels, I'll show them in the example on the next page, but they will give us a way to, um, to make cycles finite. So with this, we can describe string modules as equivalent classes of certain arcs, permissible arcs in S and band modules are homotopy classes of certain closed curves in S. In this surface, and then you get irreducible morphisms um, from pivot elementary moves. I'll, I'll try to show that in an example on the next page. From moves at endpoints of a curve. So here, in the composable modules, if they're string modules, for example, are given by some curve gamma, and then you move one endpoint, you get an irreducible morphism. And in that way, you get AR sequences similarly. Okay, but let me illustrate that on an example. With our running algebra, I, I will not have time to explain how you get the surface, but you can always construct a surface using previous result of Oppo Plamondon's role or of my work with Koyo Simores and of Valu Pilo Plamondon. Um, you see, as in this previous talk, we would associate to each arc a point in the quiver. We take arrows for rotations and the new feature is a label, which gives a new relation. Um, the irreducible morphism, for example, for this arc amounts to moving an endpoint along an arc in the tiling and make it longer, for example, and then move the other endpoint and make it longer here also within a tile. And the new feature is that you have to allow punctures because if you have these longer relations, 
this is going to be modeled by a puncture and then you need a label to make it finite dimensional. Um, so need punctures. And I think that's almost it. So I said, we can use this in tau tilting theory. That's at the moment is a conjecture and we hope to be able to prove it soon. So in the setup for string algebras, we expect that support tau tilting pairs correspond to maximum collections of permissible arcs for which we can have crossings. That's already in the surface gentle case, but the crossings should involve a label where an arc goes partly over a label. And this is just one example of a support tau tilting pair for our running algebra. Thank you.